posterity, as they say. There's two ways you get your data. One is you get it in your inbox, right? And if you haven't gotten your leads yet in your inbox, you just signed up, just email support at probate data. Chances are you haven't selected the counties that you want to receive data from. So you select up to three counties. So let's say if you're in LA, maybe you do Los Angeles, Orange County, and San Bernardino. Those are kind of a nice little cluster there. Um, and you can select up to three counties anywhere in the country. Most agents pick three counties around them. Uh, but some agents pick multiple counties, like five, six, seven, eight counties, because they have other markets they want to prospect in is because they want to refer to investors and they're thinking beyond just traditional real estate and agency. So that's one way you get the data is you get directly in your inbox. The second way you get your data is you go to probate data, you log in and you do searches. Um, and there's tons and tons of videos on how to do that. Uh, we did one last week. And if you go to youtube.com, I'll put in the chat right now, youtube.com forward slash probate data. <clears throat> Let me turn this off. You go to youtube.com forward slash probate data. There you'll see all the different training videos. You can watch the last one, last couple ones. I show you how to log in, how to do a search, how to go back and find golden leads and all that. So today's session, today's class, you're really gonna focus on um, what to do when you have the data. You're ready to move forward, you have the data, but you're missing phone numbers or you're missing an email address, right? Or you wanna know if the property of the decedent is already listed for sale. So there's a couple of tools I want to introduce you to. But before I do that, just put in the chat, tell me what you guys are using right now. How are you finding phone numbers? So let's say you got a list from probate data and we pull in, in information like phone numbers and email addresses wherever we can, 70, 80% of the time. So that means if you get hundred cases, roughly 20 or 30 of them, we don't have phone numbers and email addresses. That doesn't mean it can't be done. It just means we were able to pull it with our resources. Um, so some of you guys are using bin verify. That's a good one. I like that one a lot. Thank you, Tony. What else are you guys using? This is the good time for you guys to share your resources with the whole team here. We all learn together. Because some of you might have better resources than me. I've only been looking at it for a week and tested out about eight different solutions. Um, truth finders, is truth finders for phone numbers? Okay, that's for phone numbers, okay. Been verified, I believe is a paid version, right? Uh, anyone using Fiverr? Anyone using hiring on Fiverr to, to uh, get people to do the, the search for you? No? Okay. What else are you guys using to find phone numbers? Okay. Barbara's saying, okay, but some of these have phone numbers. That's great. That's awesome. By the way, Barbara, you're going to be over the next coming weeks, we've changed our strategy. We'll be able to get more leads in those areas uh, over the next few weeks. So that should be good for you. Okay. So, so far we've got been verified, truth finders. Um, what else is, are people using? There's only two people looking at phone numbers. What is everybody else using? Don't be shy. True people, I like that one too. True people is free, I believe, correct? Tony? Okay, and Mary's brand new, that's awesome. Okay, all right. So for those of you who are brand new, if you just signed up this week or this morning or, or, or this is your first class, usually what we do is we go into like how to find your leads inside probate data. And like I mentioned before, you can always do that on youtube.com forward slash probate data. You can watch some of the past classes there. So in the chat, you can just click that. Next week, what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll go back to like doing the, the old program, which is showing you how to use probate data. Okay, Spokio, very good. All right, so I'm gonna start here by looking for phone numbers. First, I wanna kind of show you what kind of results I'm getting. Um, I'm gonna share the results sheet that I got from this resource. And I gave them a hundred phone numbers and they came back with about 74, I believe. Here we go. Jonathan, yeah, are, they, are they cross-referencing with a no, no call list? We're, we're gonna to get to that too. Thank you. Um, so, so we have, these are all, uh, I, I prepared a spreadsheet, right? And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger, but essentially here uh, we set it up so that they have first name, last name, and then last name plus family, last name and a family address. And we also did mailing address. We just copied it over because the way this 
algorithm works, it looks up mailing address and property address at the same time. And that way it can find uh, multiple phone numbers. So this is the address of the, the PR. Um, so we have mailing address here. So here we go. Um, I'm just going to stop here. The screen is no. blank. Jonathan, there's nothing on, this, on your screen. Blank. Oh, am I sharing the wrong side? Are you guys seeing black? black. With like high you must yeah. have multiple screens, Jonathan. Oh, OK. There we go. I have That's three. I yeah. There we go. There you go, Jonathan. See, now I know you guys are paying attention. I'm just going to highlight this here. OK, so, so you see there's multiple phone numbers here, right? It, and it tells you uh, the phone number it found. Uh, and you can format this to be as a phone number, but basically this is the raw, the raw format. I'm just going to do this real quick. Format the cell. And we're going to do special phone number. There we go. Okay. So phone number. This number right here is the percentage of accuracy. Like how accurate is this phone number? So there's a 96% chance that this is the correct phone number. This one says 100%. So you can see here uh, the level of confidence, basically, that this is the right phone number. And then here it says if it's a landline or if it's a mobile or whatever, mobile or landline, basically. And then there's another phone number. This one has a 97% uh, accuracy, and that's a landline. Then the phone number three is 96, that's a mobile. So here you have one, two, three ways of getting in touch with the PR. It could be uh, most likely the first one is a PR itself, himself or herself. The next one could be maybe a family uh, uh, landline. And then maybe the last one, it could be um, uh, the person's cell phone number. So you go up to five phone numbers basically. And as you scroll down here, you'll see some of them have five numbers. They're landlines and then it goes obviously from accuracy it goes from like 99% down to like 45%. So not a great likelihood you're gonna get any hits here. But this, this is a great way to find these phone numbers. Then the next thing is email. Now, how many of you have more than one email address? All right, most of us do. So we look up multiple phone numbers, uh, multiple email addresses. So here you have up to three email addresses, right? And now we can also email them. So now we have phone numbers. We, have if they, we know if they're mobile, we know if they're landlines. We also have an email address. So if I'm prospecting here, what I would do is uh, I would make regular phone calls on the landline. I would also do text message or video messaging on, on, on the uh, mobile. And if you have their email address, I would email them as well, right? Uh, so that's, that's how I would use this. Now let's go see how we generate these kinds of reports and where we find this. Uh, I'm sorry, what program resource... is this? Yes, go ahead. What program is this? I'm sorry. Yeah, we're, we're getting there right now. So this is uh, called Best Skip Tracing. Um, I actually know the founder and, I, and I, I spoke with him, his name is Maury. If you guys uh, sign up for this and you let him know you came from probate data from Jonathan, uh, he's gonna take real good care of you guys if you have any questions. But essentially you can upload, um, you can upload an entire spreadsheet the way I did or you can do one at a time. Um, they have price breaks of I believe um, it's, it's 15 cents a record that, that comes back successfully. And then if you, I think if you pay like 25 bucks a month, they give you like 25% discount or something like that. So if you know if you're gonna be using it a lot, uh, this is a good program. Uh, and this is not instant, but within, within you know, a day or so. Um, I would say within hours even. Like one of the things I said, you know, to wait that, that long. So I actually got my results within, within about an hour. Um, and um, it, was, it was very good. So this is called bestskiptracing.com. Um, this is the one that I liked that, that as far as paid services, um, put this in the chat. Bestskiptracing.com. Okay. So, um, the next thing we're going to look at is, um, Charles question. Charles was like, well, this, this, how do you know if this is, these people are on a do not call list? Well, that's a good question. Um, we've been we've been kind of uh, not struggling, but we've been kind of wrestling with this question: Do we need to scrub the list or not against do not call? And the answer is no, because 
there are so many different variations of do not call consequences. Like if you call a number on the do not call list, there's different ways you can do it. There's different regulations, different penalties and all that, different states, different counties. So we leave it up to you guys, you know, consider the information you get for us is for informational purposes. So what you do with it is up to you. You got to follow your own guidelines, your own rules and all that in your state. So for those of you that like to uh, want to scrub phone numbers, this is uh, called a dncproject.org. And I believe they charge like a penny per phone number to look that up. There are free resources where you can do one at a time. And if you have an assistant, if you have like a virtual assistant that will do this, uh, then you can use, you know, you can use them to do it. That could be part of their, that could be part of their job description is that they scrub this against the, um, the do not call list. So this is the charge here. If you do, uh, let's, well, a million, we don't want to do a million. Let's just say we do 500. Let me get a price here. Um, let's see, 5,000. It looks like they increased the prices here. It looks like they have a flat rate of 35 that goes up to a certain amount. So if I were you, I would take the list that I have. Let's say you have a list of 500 and then scrub it against here and you pay 35 bucks. Um, mobile scrubbing, I don't think you need to do that. And here's the, the latest as of, cause here's what they do. They, they update their database with the do not call list, the federal do not call list. And they have a, a, what's called an API connection into their list. So when you run the numbers, it just checks against their list and it gets updated on the regular here. So as of 8 a.m. on the third, so that was this morning, basically. So that's the uh, DNC project. Does anyone have any tools they like to use for scrubbing against do not call? If you do, just put it in the, in the list. Okay, so how do you guys do it right now? How do you, how do you uh, check out phone numbers to see if they're on the do not call list? How, does, how do you guys do that? Forget about probate, just in general, how do you protect yourself if that's something you feel like you need to do? Let me take a little break here and have a slurp of water, hold on. Okay, good one, Barbara. So here's where here's my um, concern and confusion, right? If, if I get this question from you guys all the time, like, is this verified against the do not call us? How does this verify? Are you scrubbing this a day? And I keep saying no. And now here's a solution. I say, well, how are you currently protecting yourself? And it's silence. <laughs> how are you doing it? How are you doing it then? Are you asking this question that's supposedly so important and you don't wanna get in trouble? You're not solving the problem as it is already. And so far, I think you guys are all doing okay, but I wanna provide this tool uh, in case you really wanna scrub this. So my point is this, if you're asking us to scrub the list for, for do not call, uh, yet you haven't done anything yourself so far, then, then consider start doing it for yourself. Like we're not gonna go in and scrub our entire list and spend money on it if it doesn't matter to most of you. If you're just asking for the sake of asking, uh, that's a different story. So. Here's a tool at dncproject.org. There are others out there. Um, okay, good question. Linda's asking, why wouldn't you scrub the mobile list? I get so many robocalls in one day and I get really aggravated. So Linda, are you asking for us to remove mobile phones so you can't text the prospects? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying, why wouldn't I want to scrub them? So if it's on a do not call list, um, I'm not calling them because, I mean, I get anywhere from five to 10 mobile calls a day, robo calls a day, and I have blocked their number and yet they find another number to call me on. Yeah, and they keep, they keep rotating. It happens to me all the time too. They keep rotating it. They keep calling from different numbers. You keep blocking it and they find another way to call you. They're, John, they're pretty aggressive. Yeah. Jonathan, I would think it's very important, in my opinion, to put it on the uh, DNC scrub list on your mobile because my mobile number is actually on the do, do not call list. 
on that very issue because people just do not stop calling. They don't, they don't call me at all on my cell phone, but I got VoIP numbers on my cell phone and they call like crazy on that. So yeah. I've decided to put the, uh, this was years ago, n- new, oh, so many years ago, putting it on do not call this because I got bombarded and now I don't. So it is, I think my opinion is very important on the, on the mobile as well. I agree, yeah. So just so we're clear in the use case here, what I just showed you is to scrub the phone numbers that you get from probate data or elsewhere to see if they're in the do not call list and then decide if you wanna call them or not. For your own usage, yes. If you don't wanna get robocalls, then put them on the do not call list, your, your own phone number, put that on your do not call list so you don't get calls. Uh, but to Charles' point, you know, they find ways to call you, especially if there's voice over IP apps on your phone uh, and virtual phone numbers and Google voice numbers and all that, they, they just keep calling to find ways to get, get a hold of you. Um, okay, so the next thing uh, we're going to go over is um, two things here. Hold on. Okay, here we go. So I want to just uh, interact. I, it wasn't quite clear enough. I think it's very, very important that you put the mobile numbers that you get and, and do into the, what is it, the DNC project, whatever you're going to do, and yeah. scrub mobile as well that was my point right not just the landlines but the mobile numbers that you got as well because people will get my opinion like me i'd get very ticked off to someone call me on my mobile number and they got it right so i think that's very important to do both just to clarify the point yeah no good point good point thank you all right so the next thing we're going to do is um one i, I asked you about i talked to different agents um, and, and Facebook, but also just been emailing with different people. Like if I didn't have, if I didn't have MLS, um, because M- MLS is a bit of a, it's a bit of a, um, what's the right word? It's like a fiefdom. It's kind of broken into many different categories and many different areas. And you got to be a broker to have access to this area. Then you have a, it's another area. It's very protected, right? But let's just say if I if I don't if I want to know generally speaking if a house is on the market. Um, there's probably two places I could check, right? There's realtor.com. That's pretty accurate, right? And this is what I'm hearing. If you guys have other resources, um, obviously tell me, tell me. And zillow.com. Those are like the two nationwide ones that I could think of. So I always think of it in terms of a system and Redfin. Okay. I always think of terms of a system. Uh, how could I scale something really fast and do it and automate it, right? So I'm going to show you is like a two, three step process. Um, and um, basically what I would do if I, had, uh, if I had an assistant to just look up properties, if they're listed or not, I would obviously give my assistant access to the MLS in my market and then go look it up. Hey, is this property for sale or not? Is it listed or not? And if it's not, then you prospect. And if it is listed, then you don't prospect. Um, and then the second step I would do is if, if uh, I don't have an assistant, I got to do this myself. I could still do it, but I don't think it's a good use of my time. Let's say you've got about, you know, 100, 300 leads any given month that come in from different areas. Plus, you got to follow from the month before. So let's just say across the board, 200 leads, you got you to follow up and you got to look at. And you got to look at every month, you got to look up 200 properties that, um, that may or may not be, be listed. Because if they are listed, you want to waste your time. And if they're not listed, you want to get in there and, and start prospecting. So then if I, if I don't have an assistant and um, I don't want to hire an assistant, what I need now is automation. Uh, if you don't have automation and you're, there's only two ways out of it. If you don't want to do it yourself, you got to hire someone to do it or you got to buy a tool to do it. And you got to figure out what your time is worth. So as long as your tool that you buy is, is less than what your time is worth, what you would have spent on it over the course of a month or a year, you're in good shape. So let's say your average, you know, let's say you make $100,000 a year in commissions and you work, you know, say 40, 45 hours a year, or let's say 50 hours a year, and you put in a good 40 hours a week, you come out to about an average hourly rate of say, you know, 80 bucks. I just made that up. You don't have to fact check me on this. Let's just say it's 80 bucks an hour, right? but you do the math. So whatever tool you would spend money on, if as long as it's less than 80 bucks an hour and you spend say four or five hours a, a month looking out properties or even three hours a month times 12 months, you can quickly see that over the course of the year, your time's worth that you're looking, spent on looking out property is worth 3,600 bucks or $4,000. Mm-hmm. 
So as long as the tool is less than that $4,000, you have a positive ROI. So I'm gonna show you a tool that's only 200 bucks. It's a spreadsheet where you, you, you plug in the addresses, it goes to realtor.com, scrapes the website, brings back the data and shows you if it's for sale or not, if it's listed or not. And, you, and it does that on the background automatically. Uh, and it's the same people that built the best skip tracing, the same people that built this tool. And it's very cool because if you think about it, I'm gonna share my screen again. Again, this is for those of us that uh, don't have an assistant, don't, are not interested in hiring an assistant, we're somewhat tech savvy, or we understand how to use spreadsheets and we know how to use follow instructions, then this tool is for us, right? So I just put an address in here um, and I pulled up this property. It's in Oxnard, um, it's uh, Kingsbridge Way. And, and if it was up for sale, it would show for sale and it would show the realtors, the real estate agent's information. And then if we were smart enough, right? If we had a tool that could do this, it would just look it up, look for certain keywords. If it's there, that means it's for sale. If it's not there, it means it's not for sale. It means it's not listed. So let me just do a quick pulse check with you guys. Would everyone agree to, to somewhat larger extent, like this is accurate enough. If I looked at realtor.com, I looked up an address and based on what it said on realtor.com, how much confidence would you guys have that this is correct? Just put in the chat, like yeah. 50%, 100%, 95, okay, 100. Okay, that's all I need to know. So now imagine if I could take 100 addresses, right, of the decedent, and I could put them into a spreadsheet, I push a button, I hit play, and I just walk away, go have lunch, and when I come back, all hundred of them, or I go on appointment even, go get a listing, because that's what you want to do with your time. All hundred of them have a, an output where it shows if it's for sale, yes or no. And then if it is for sale, here are the details. And it also gives you all the other details in terms of maybe square footage, lot size, blah, blah, blah. But that's not what you care about. You just really want to know how much of these are for sale. So let's say out of a hundred, 10 of them are already for sale. That means you've got 90 viable prospects, right? So the tool that um, I want you guys to pay attention to is called Easy Excel Automation. Easy Excel Automation. These guys have good videos too. And good instructions, good support. Same guy here, Maury. Now the, the tool that you want is the realtor.com scraper. It's 200 bucks. I'm gonna put a direct link in there too. You guys can watch the video, watch, watch how they do it. And it's a one-time fee, correct? It's a one-time fee. It says uh, for one year, 200 bucks. So it might be an annual thing. But guys, here's my point. <clears throat> you have to understand the reason why I'm showing this, I'm teaching this is because I've been hearing from you guys, maybe not exactly you who are on the call, but many of you by email, by messages, uh, by, by me message on Facebook, basically like, can you just tell me if it's for sale or not? Why can't you tell me for sales? So, okay, fine. I can't, we're working on a solution that'll tell us if it's for sale or not. But for right now, this is the best solution I can think of. Because if you really want this done, there's two options. You do it yourself or have someone or something do it for you. Someone, obviously an assistant, something is this, is a, is a scraping tool, right? And you don't have to install software. You don't, it's basically, you watch a video, you, uh, you add all the, the addresses in there and then you push play pretty much and uh, it comes back with all the details. Uh, this is Mori, this is the guy who built it, right? So. Uh, again, here, the, the, link, the link is directly mentioned here in the chat. So those were the, the main three uh, tools that I wanted to show you guys. And for those of you that are you, like Mary, um, uh, go to youtube.com forward slash probate data. And you can watch videos from last week. You can watch playlists, uh, some top rated webinars, success stories and interviews, uh, historical prospecting leads, what those, those are all about. Like, especially for Mary, this is an interesting one for you. 
Um, platinum, uh, how that, you guys all have platinum, pretty much all of you have platinum, so you don't have to watch this. But if you're brand new, I would watch this one right here and watch one of these videos over here. Okay, let's see here. Magda is asking, Mojo Dialer, how does that work? I don't know. I mean, I know it works. I know a lot of people use it and a lot of people love it. Um, and I don't know the, the specifics. Um, yeah, so Mojo Dialer, you say it takes me an hour to talk to five or seven leads. Well, I think what they're, the problem they're solving is you don't have to dial to get those five or seven leads. It just keeps dialing, I think up to three numbers at a time. And they just keep going out until they get someone on the phone. That's when it connects. And then you talk to them instead of you sitting, you know, punching in numbers all the time. Um, that's how you can get as many dials in as possible. And that's really good for your statistics. Okay, let me stop the sharing here. All right, folks, any questions before we call it a day? A question for you, Jonathan. This is Greg. Um, I have a colleague who's actually looking to see if they could get the uh, probate data. Uh, of course, I did the MTI um, education. That's how I was able to get it. Do yeah. you sell that separately or, you know, um, they have to do do the course before they, you know, they can get access? No, we, we, sell, different probate, we sell probate data to whoever wants access. So we, get, we sell to uh, uh, real estate investors. We sell to inheritance funding company, financial planners. Um, and um, yeah, does that answer your question? You don't have to take uh, C-Press to, to buy. Okay. Okay, but the price seems to be different though. If you are true C press, you pay particular monthly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you if you C press, you're getting a heck of a deal. You're not paying setup fees. You're paying sixty seven bucks a month. If you come in off the street, so to speak, and you're not going with C press, uh, I think it's I think it's four hundred bucks setup, and then like ninety nine bucks a month. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's my question. Yeah. Okay. Quick Any other question. questions? With Sophia, the bestgiftracing.com, exactly. I'm, I'm not sure how you use that. I, I wasn't very clear on what you were trying to. Is that any numbers that you have or any names or addresses that you have, you can find the phone number through that bestgiftracing.com website? Correct. Yeah. 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 So, so for um, the phone numbers that you want to look up, they're most likely going to be the petitioners, right? So the executive administrator. So if you have their name and address, but you don't have a phone number and email address, then best skip tracing is a great resource for that. Okay. And just to let you know, like we, we pull as much as we can, we integrate with a third party called IDI and we pull, I want to say close to 15,000 records or uh, phone numbers and email addresses every month, even with that on top, uh, we don't get 100% of them. We get maybe, depending on the county, anywhere from 60 to 80% of phone numbers and email addresses. So for those of you that want to get that last, you know, 20% or so, or you want to find phone numbers, then this this is a tool you can use. So you can use that with anything, not just for... Yeah, it doesn't have to be probate. It could be anything, anything. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. I have a question. Go ahead. Blanca, go ahead. Uh, so... So if you guys are getting from the data from the probate, you guys are not getting this data from directly from the uh, courthouse because I mean, I thought that um, you would guys get this data and PRs provide the correct email and phone numbers to the courthouse. Why wouldn't, I'm kind of new in this. This yeah. is like my session with you guys, but yeah. I thought that the data you guys providing to us is coming directly for the courthouse, isn't it? That's a great question. It is. Um, if it's if it's at the courthouse, if it's been filed, we grab it there. Uh, that's the best information you can get, like the email address and phone number. Uh, however, a lot of times the county clerks, they don't check for that. Uh, not the county, but the court clerks, they don't check for that. And it's not mandatory. Uh, it's not a mandatory field. Uh, so a lot of times they just won't put anything in there because either they don't care to, they don't want to, or it's not required on that particular petition for probate. Yeah, Jonathan, I think you made a quick, a good point. Um, I go on the, um, this, you know, register of wills to just double check some of this data. They will put the name and the address of the PR as well as the attorney, but they don't have any phone numbers or email addresses, right? So yeah. you have to use something else, which is what I believe probate data is uh, providing to us. Yeah. I, have so, you used exact dial before for skip tracing, exact dial? Did you try that? I use that. 
No, I haven't tried them before. You like them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They charge me hundred dollars for I mean twenty dollars for hundred records per month, and I can always upgrade. But yeah, I haven't I tried the other one before. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. So Linda's asking, what's the register of will? So um, a lot of times, if you go into the county courthouse website, you can look for a register of actions (ROA) or online court access uh, documents, and sometimes you can pull up certain documents related to the probate case. Uh, so in there, you can find sometimes they'll list a scanned image of the actual probate case for a fee. Sometimes like LA County charges, I think $7 uh, or no, $1.50 per page. Um, other counties, they just list the, not the scanned document, but just some of the information that's in there, like attorney information. Um, so it's called register of actions or a register of wills. Um, also sometimes they're called uh, dockets. Um, but if you go into it, generally speaking, just like if you, if you Google, your, your county and then probate um, clerk. And you go to their website, you look for online access, online documents, online case management, online case access, register of actions. Those are some of the things that uh, you can dive a little bit deeper into to the cases. Remember, what's important is that you understand one thing and one thing only. Everything else is commentary. And that is what I've been repeating now for 10 years. The moment someone files for probate is the moment the family and the entire state is indicating to the rest of the world, we're moving forward. Whatever happened, happened. Grandpa died. We need to move forward. Grandpa died 10 years ago, and now we're moving forward. Grandpa died 10 days ago, and now we're moving forward. Grandpa died you know, 10 weeks ago, and now we're moving forward. The moment the petition for probate is filed is the moment it's announcing to the world saying, okay, we're moving forward. That is an indication of what? motivation. And last time I checked, there's two things every agent is looking for, inventory and motivation. Maybe a third thing is equity. So um, just keep that in mind. Don't go too far down the rabbit hole in terms of like researching what's on the will and all that. Just get the phone numbers. If you can do that, don't get lost in the, in the story, so to speak. Just know that they are ready to move forward and you can help them with that. And they're going through something that's difficult um, the morning aside, obviously, but the, the paperwork and the, all this stuff, they don't know what they're up for, but you do, right? You're certified. You've, you read the books, you've, you've, you've been at it. Even if you're brand new, you're, you're, you're ahead of it. You know, I never forget. I was, I once taught uh, international advertising at UCLA and my, my mentor could see I was super nervous <laughs> and he's like, why are you nervous? Like, Man, I don't, I feel like I don't know anything. I don't know enough. You know, and he's like, look, as long as you're two chapters ahead of the students, you're the expert. I was like, oh, good. You know, I read like the entire book at this point, you know, it's the same thing for you guys. They don't know what they're about to go through. You might be nervous because a, either you just got certified and you feel like, oh my goodness, what do I know? Or you've been at it for a while and you're still nervous. That's okay to get butterflies in your stomachs. But keep in mind, you got certified because you want to help these people. You got certified because you want to get into a niche where relationships matter. You got certified because you like taking people from here to there, right? And last thing I want to say about probate and why it's so powerful is that uh, there's a lot of motivation. There's a lot of motivation and 90% of cases will sell their property within a year. Compare this to 6% of homeowners, according to NAR, 6% of homeowners, according to NAR, will sell within 12 months, whereas 90% of cases in probate will sell within 12 months. So if you were marketing uh, to your general farm, right, and you know 6% are going to list this year in the next 12 months, that means 94% of your marketing efforts are going to waste because only 6% are going to sell. Uh, I mean, it's, that's, those are the stats. Those are the numbers, right? Versus with probate, yeah, the numbers are smaller, the total volume is smaller, but if you're going to focus your, your marketing dollars when you're going to get a 90% hit rate in terms of motivation to sell, um, probate is a winner every single time. And I don't know what's going to happen with the inventory. I don't know what's going to happen with the housing market, but I can tell you if doing this for 11 years now, no matter where the inventory is, no matter where the economy is, no matter where the housing market is, no matter what's going on with the, with the presidency, who's president, who's coming in, who's going out, it doesn't matter. Probate is always there and there's always happening and it's always inventory. So with that being said, that's all I got for today. Be well, stay safe, 
And even though you might be vaccinated, just keep washing those hands, okay? <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, you're welcome. Ciao.